Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and thank you for downloading the second screencast in the Scaling Rails series brought to you by New Relic, the leader in Rails application performance management. So Rails comes with a bunch of ways to do caching right out of the box, the first of which is page caching, which is something you want to do as much as humanly possible, and I'll show you why. The typical Rails setup, you might have something like this, where you've got a mongrel sitting behind an Apache, you then have a client that comes in, you know, the server gets passed from the Apache to the mongrel and back out to the client. And with a single mongrel, you can typically handle between 20 and 50 requests per second, depending on how heavy your Rails app is. This comes out to about 2 million hits a day, which is good enough for most applications out there on the internet. Now if you have page caching turned on, what's going to happen is a request is going to come in, go to the mongrel, the page will be generated, sent back to the Apache, but it's also going to be stored on the local file system in a location like so. Now the next time somebody requests that same page, it's going to send that request to Apache, and Apache is actually going to load that directly from what it finds on the file system and send that back to the client. In this way, you can get a much higher throughput because last time I checked, Apache can handle up to like a thousand requests per second, which amounts to about 86 million hits a day, which is very good. That's a lot of traffic just by one Apache instance. So let's go ahead and see how easy it is to implement page caching in a typical Rails application. So here's my app. The first thing I want to do is to go into my development.rb file because I'm going to be running the server in development and I want caching to be turned on. So I simply change perform caching equal to true. Then I'm going to go into my post controller. This is your typical blogging application where a blog has many posts. So inside my post controller, in the index action, I'm going to limit the amount of posts we show because I've populated it with several thousand. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say caches page index and show. I want it to page cache the index and the show action. I'm going to then start up my server, go to my browser, to the index action, and there we go. Called it up. You can see down here on the console that it says cached page post.html, so we know it cached it. Now if I refresh that page, you're going to see that nothing happens because it's simply loading the cached page. Now I can go to the show action here, and I can see down in my log again here that it says cached page post comma, you know, 100,001. If I go into my public directory, I can actually see the cached pages that it generated for me. There they are. Now there's a problem here. If I go and I edit any of these posts, maybe I get rid of this one, two, three, four at the front of cha-cha-cha, and I update it. Hey look, it didn't update on the show page. Huh. Well, that's because it's still loading that statically cached page. So I need to do something to expire that cache. Well, let's see. I submitted to the update function. So one way I could do that is to simply go to the update action and add two lines. I'm going to say expire page action index because I want to expire that. And secondly, expire page action show because I also need to expire the show action for that particular post that just got updated. If I save that, edit again, and hit update, we can see that now it's properly cha-cha-cha. If I look at my logs, I can see that, hey look, it expired page post.html and the specific one for that post. And then if I scroll down, I can see that it regenerated that cache when I hit that show page again. So let's take one more look at the code we added. All we added was caches page index and show. There's something interesting going on here though. In our respond to block, we say that we accept HTML and XML. So what this is going to do, just like we saw, it's going to cache this at this location, posts.html. If somebody goes to the XML version, by default it's going to cache posts.xml. We can add a JSON format, which of course will cache at post.json. We can also add custom MIME types if we want to our Rails application. You know, we could always do this. Let's say we wanted an iPhone MIME type. We add that. We create an index.iphone.erb file. And then we can simply add format.iphone, which by default will cache in post.iphone, as you might expect. 
As you saw, by default, our page cache actions get stored in the public directory. Some people don't like this too much. You can easily change it with just this line of configuration. So this would make all of our page cache actions go into the public cache directory. Now you know how to do it, but let's take a moment to think about when you might want a page cache. Really, you want to do it when every user sees the exact same content on the page. Some good examples of this might be a blog, like the Rails Envy blog. Right? Everyone sees the same thing, whether they're logged into the admin interface or not. It's always the same. Another good example is any type of news sources, like the Onion page here. This may be changes maybe once a day, once every few hours. So page cache it, because everyone's going to see the same thing. Maybe even pages like the RubyConf website. You might have used a very dynamic you know, admin interface to enter in this data, but once you get it all in there, it's not going to change very often. So you might as well page cache it, because everyone needs to see the same data. Pages like Facebook, oh, this is my personal Facebook page. Probably not a good candidate for page caching, right? It's got a lot of dynamic data. But even people like Facebook can take advantage of page caching on other pages. For instance, I saw their uh, developer page, right? It's got some events, it's got some news, but um, it doesn't change very often. And everybody sees the same content, so why not page cache the whole thing? Well, that about sums it up for this episode. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about cache expiration. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.